Okay guys, today I'm working in collaboration with Blackie Thomas to talk about my summer wilderness survival essentials from the base kit to survival items that should assist you should things go wrong, should things not go right. Essentially if you need a fail safe. So without any further ado, let's take a look at the kit and the tools to my summer survival essentials. Also, before we jump into it, don't forget to check the description below, and I'm sure in a card around somewhere around here, I will include Blackie Thomas's channel so that you can also check out his video that he is doing alongside mine. So without any further ado, now let's jump into my kit and tools. Okay, so before we dive into the kit essentials, let's talk about the tool set. Because I think the tool set is essentially the most important part, and it's really the foundation that lays the base work for what you should be able to do, or what this tool kit will allow you to do. So, let's talk about the tool kit. So these are the three tools, and I think that these in particular items, maybe not these exact ones, but this general size is what I aim for, because not only can all of these tools serve a decent to very good level of functionality, but they can also be readily and easily carried on body. So the first one is the knife. Now this knife in particular is the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter. This is the original in CPM 3V, but a number of knives would suffice in this role. Things such as the Condor Pterosaur would also work if you're looking for a more budget option, or even knives like the Mora Bushcraft Black or Garberg. There are plenty of knives within this uh, size range, but my choice is the Bark River Knives Bushcraft after, like I said, in CPM 3V for its excellent edge retention, and honestly, this has just been one of my go-to knives, really, since the beginning of when I started getting serious bushcrafting knives. So, this is the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter, but essentially, what a small to medium-sized camp knife will allow you to do is essentially process firewood, obviously start fires, process natural resources such as food items or funguses, such stuff that will allow you to make tinders, make fire starters, that kind of generalized task with the knife. So the knife is probably actually the least important of these three tools in the grand scheme of survival, but for doing general camp chores, it is a pretty necessary tool. In addition to that, as you guys probably saw on the sheath, I also have a ferro rod uh, attached to that as well, but I also have another ferro rod in the survival kit, so we'll pretend like this one doesn't exist for the sake of this video. Okay, next tool is the hatchet, and in specific, this one is the Grand Forest Brooks Wildlife, or Grand Forest Brook Wildlife Hatchet, and I prefer the Wildlife Hatchet in this particular case because of its size. This is a 13 and a half inch handled hatchet, so it's very compact, but at the same time, this is a very capable hatchet. So this is one of the smallest hatchets that I've been able to field test and use, and has proven itself to be a reliable, useful uh, hatchet for things such as shelter building and resource gathering. So gathering firewood for overnight. This isn't going to be the best of best options. Of course, a full-sized axe would be the best, but this hatchet, especially paired with the saw we'll talk about in just a second, make for a pretty formidable force, whether you're trying to build a shelter to hunker down or if you're just trying to collect some firewood. So the GBA Wildlife Hatchet, it is a great hatchet that is very easy to carry, and like I said, it is definitely good at, at um, processing resources and collecting firewood. So that is my choice. Okay, so the last one is the Silky Gomboy, and this could also be substituted with with the Baco Laplander, but for my choice, this is the Silky Gomboy, and this one in particular has the curved teeth, and the reason why I chose the curved teeth and the Gomboy 210 is that this is a very small package that will fit in a cargo pant pocket, but at the same time, this thing can take down pieces of wood that are easily four to five inches in diameter, so this thing can actually get some pretty serious wood 
but in all reality, it is pretty good on about three to two and a half inch in diameter wood, which is more than likely if you're using this kit to gather firewood or building materials, probably what you will be aiming for. So the Silky Gone Boy is my go-to because it processes that, you know, three to two and a half inch, you know, that around wrist thick wood like an absolute boss. And so this thing really does a good job and I cannot sing its praises enough. Now I will say the blade is not the most uh, forgiving. It is a bit fragile, but so long as you can work around that, this is a fantastic choice and rounds out the kit uh, part, rounds out the tool part of this kit nicely. Okay, so now let's talk about the actual kit itself. Now, admittedly, not everything that I deem an essential, uh, or there are some things in this kit that I don't necessarily deem essentials, but we'll cover the essentials. So starting with the outside, and as I've mentioned in many survival videos, the PLB, or Personal Locator Beacon, is the first thing to talk about. And the reason why I think the PLB is worth mentioning and why it's a survival essential is the whole idea of survival is to get rescued. You know, you carry all these tools so that you can build shelters, start fires, and wait out, you know, whatever kind of weather or situation you happen to be in for someone to come and rescue you. So the PLB, while it's not a foolproof way, I think that it's something that's important enough that it's not that heavy, it's not that large. You should throw a PLB in your kit or on your kit at all times because of what it can offer. Uh, when they work, which they usually work, like I would say 90% of the time, they basically send a signal to search and rescue to locate your exact location so it doesn't get much better than a plb for actual rescue and signaling this is exactly what search and rescue wants you to have so a plb is very important next to that and still focusing on the outside is a light med kit and this kit isn't anything too crazy or too special I struggled to get it out, but essentially all it is, I have a couple ranger bands to help keep everything compressed down, but basically it's just a very lightweight kit to take care of lightweight kind of problems. There is some light pain reliever, Tylenol, there's some uh, Benadryl, and different kind of afterbite and uh, gauze pads band-aids such stuff like that that if you get stung or if you have you know any minor ailments this is the kind of kit that just has stuff so that it can take care of you and keep you as comfortable as possible when you are trying to survive and i think that that is something that is overlooked a lot the mental health aspect slash you know comfort in a survival situation obviously it's not going to be perfectly comfortable but if you can take little steps now to make yourself as comfortable in a survival situation. It'll really help in the long run if you are actually finding yourself in a survival situation. Okay, starting it off is about 10 feet of paracord. And the reason why I recommend paracord, though it is a little bit bulky, uh, Tarred bank line is also okay. But what I like about paracord is, of course, you get the actual cordage itself. You also get inner strands, as you can clearly see there, and it essentially allows you to maximize your cordage usage. So if you need to do things that require the thicker cord, you can use the thicker cord, but you also have inner strands that you can use separately for different tasks. And while not while this thinner cord might not work perfectly for every task or every occasion, it does work pretty well in a lot of situations. So 10 feet of paracord with the guts is my heavy recommendation for cordage. So next to the cordage is the first of the shelters. Now I do recommend to carry two kind of shelter or mylar blankets. One, because mylar blankets are reasonably fragile, so they can get damaged pretty easily, but also because I think that shelter, along with fire, as we'll discuss in just a moment, is one of the most important parts of survival. So I think having a little bit of redundancy in shelter and in fire is very important. So the first of the mylar blankets, not a huge one, it is a reasonably lightweight one. 
So the next focus is fire starting. So with fire starting, uh, you'll notice that I have three fire starters here and I would recommend either two to three different fire starting methods in any survival kit and one the reason why is I think that fire, especially here in Alaska, is something so vital, so important to whether you're trying to stay warm as it often gets cold. Even in our summers, it can get cold. Um, but fire is just so important that you really don't want to uh, go light in this way in Alaska. So I have three different fire starting methods. Should one fail or should I be able to use another one to offset the other? So I have matches on the top, waterproof matches in a waterproof case. Then I have a ferrocerium rod right here. And lastly, I have a lighter that has O-ring sealing it so it is reasonably waterproof tight and most importantly the lighter fluid in here is staying in here because of the o-rings keeping it all trapped in so this is actually a little peanut lighter but this works very well for being a good survival kit lighter because it holds its fluid so have a good lighter good ferro rod and some good matches in case i have to start a fire and like i said have several different means of obtaining that should the ferro rod break should the lighter get you know um, should the lighter get exposed to water or for some weird reason lighter fluid evaporate uh, you know have matches to back that up so in addition i also have in here uh, steel wool so while i don't necessarily carry batteries in this kit i do have a lot of batteries around so for those who don't know steel wool can be used um, to start fires if you just have a battery you can touch the two connect connecting terminals or connect the terminals i should say of a battery to get spark from steel wool so potentially another fire starting method there as well so those are my fire starting methods like i said i recommend going heavy on fire starting methods because they're simply too important to not uh, have let's talk about the last part of the kit and that is the secondary shelter so we talked about the earlier mylar bag uh, this is the second mylar blanket and this one is a little bit larger a little bit more robust but even still these things are reasonably you know easy to damage so what i did with this mylar blanket is i wrapped it in a bandana and I took that bandana and put three rubber bands around it to keep that bandana in place. And ultimately, this whole system is useful. You know, you can use these rubber bands in multiple different ways in survival situations. You can use the bandana, obviously, for many, many, many uses. And then, of course, the mylar blanket on the inside for shelters. Okay, so the last essential is actually not in the kit, but it is outside the kit, and that is the Vargo Titanium Bot. And this is something that uh, many different people, you know, carry different canteens. My personal favorite is the Bot because it is a bottle and pot kind of hybrid, so it works pretty well in both regards as being a bottle and also a pot. So that is the last official kind of piece, but I'll give a few honorable mentions before I call this video a wrap but I do recommend the Vargo bot I've sung the praises of this system for a long time I just really like that the Vargo bot is supremely versatile it can be plugged into many different situations and you know do a lot of different types of cooking tasks or boiling water tasks but at the same time too it can also carry water like a bottle and lastly especially with the titanium version of the bot this thing weighs nothing so this is a very very lightweight system to carry Carry. and so yeah that is the Vargo bot anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed taking a look at that survival kit and some of the different tools that I also carry survival essentials during the summer months and here in Alaska you know Alaska is a little bit different you might notice you might notice a lack of things like flashlights or such and that's because you know it doesn't really get dark here you know it's already about 10 o'clock right now and it's still completely you know bright outside so in our summer you know there's different factors of course in our winter a flashlight would be a huge essential because of how little daylight we get but things like the flashlight aren't actually that important to survival 
in the summer because you just don't need it to see you know we have daylight pretty much constantly so different things like that you know play at different times of the year some things are more important in different seasons um, but ultimately that is my summer survival essentials that's why I carry in this kit and like I said the tools that I pair with this small kit and all together this kit and those tools can fit on a belt and you know inside pockets of my pants so I can carry all of this very realistically with me just about every time I go out into the wilderness and I usually do um, because a lot of this stuff especially the kit is too important not to especially when you're going you know 50 60 miles out of town you know you're very far away you're definitely out of cell range um, and in fact here it doesn't even take that far to go to get out of cell range you know you're out of cell range oftentimes before you even realize it so you know having a good kit uh, to help keep you alive in whatever type of situation is very important so anyways that's my kit and if you'd like to see Blackie Thomas's kit um, or my if you'd like to see Tom, Blackie Thomas's kit, uh, definitely check the link in the description below to his video so that he can show you what he carries. We are definitely in different climates, different types of summer situations. His summers are on average far hotter, far, far more humid than ours. So, you know, you need a different type of kit, different types of uh, tools to be able to survive effectively in his climate and in his environment. So anyways guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you're new to the channel, thank you for stopping by and thank you for checking out the channel. Hopefully you like, share, comment, and subscribe. It is heavily appreciated. As always, God bless and I'm out.